Serious. Parents of sociopaths, psychopaths, or people who have done terrible things, how do you feel about your offspring? Throw away for hopefully obvious reasons. Keep in mind, first of all, that sociopath and psychopath aren't clinical diagnosis. I'm answering this using the commonly accepted lay people's idea of this term. I adopted a seven-year-old boy about 14 years ago. It was the worst decision of my entire life. He was and is a sociopath. He lies, he steals, he hurts, he cheats. He can be incredibly superficially charming, but leaves a truly awe-inspiring wake of emotional and physical destruction behind him everywhere he goes. I say awe-inspiring because unless you've spent time around this, unless you truly understand how amazingly destructive this can be to a person's very self, you just don't get it. The psychiatrist during pre-adoption gave some warnings in her brief. The social worker, whose job it is to get kids adopted, pushed and pushed, poo-pooing the psychiatrist's report, minimizing them, and insisting reports from his placements were biased. Now understand, I am not inexperienced. I have other kids. I've worked with special needs kids. I thought I was prepared. I wasn't. Nothing, and I mean nothing, can prepare someone to have this inflicted on themselves. It changed me. It fundamentally changed me as a person. It did the same to everyone else in the family, in different ways. Friends tell me I am less outgoing, slower to laugh and smile and joke, less prone to trust and far, far too matter-of-fact and blasé about everything. I've developed this latter as a survival defense mechanism. One learns quickly, one simply cannot react emotionally to anything at all, ever, as it will be used brutally against you. Even when as a teen he steals your car, ignores you when confronting him in the driveway as he attempts to make his getaway, then runs over you in the process, hurting you fairly badly, and then driving away while you lie there screaming, and then coming back hours later and acting as if literally nothing has happened, even conning the authorities into thinking it was a silly accident despite testimony and another witness account. He has stolen more things than I can imagine from home. Game consoles, electronics, computers, he is indiscriminate. Now an adult, he steals from children just to pawn the stuff to pay off his dealer so he doesn't get beat. He's never held down a job for more than a week or two and that only three or four times in his life. He survives by manipulating and stealing, but he knows it all and will tell everyone and me in detail how they are doing everything wrong and how easy it is to be wealthy. He doesn't appear to see the irony of it all. He lies like most people breathe, literally. Every word that comes out of his mouth is manipulative and untrue in some way. One learns to expect it. Nothing at all ever is at face value. It is horrible. He is horrible. I hate him, but I love him. I spent so much time and effort trying to help. He returned the effort by hurting, manipulating, lying, and stealing. I cannot help wishing he would get in a traffic accident, get stabbed, shot, beat up into a coma, disabled. I cannot help feeling like a horrible, disgusting human being despite everything he's done for even allowing myself to think this, but I still think it again and again. He is no longer living here, but every time nobody is home, we return, wondering what will be missing or wrecked. He doesn't get caught legally. He's just barely smart enough and charming enough to set up others instead and somehow manage to keep himself out of trouble, mostly. He's been tuned up by former friends, investigated, etc., but so far has managed to avoid serious repercussions. I have little doubt it will catch up with him eventually. Hopefully, somebody won't be badly hurt or die before this happens. It's a constant nightmare, slowly getting better as our lives move apart, and with the incredible help of friends and family to set and brutally enforce limits. He's a dangerous person though. I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that one day I may wake up to a gunshot or a knife wound. Moral of the story, if there's any hint, any hint at all, of a kid having no ability for empathy, lack of remorse, no moral development, and incredibly superficially charming, then run. Run fast. Run hard. Run away and never, ever look back. Just get away. I think my mom is a sociopath. I was raised by my grandparents for the first 13 years of my life, but she was in and out for most of that time. When I was five, her boyfriend tried to choke me to death. She was mad at the time, but afterwards she didn't report it and we continued to stay with him. 
My grandpa used to hit me and was constantly mean to me, made me sit on the floor, wouldn't let me talk around him, threw me outside by my hair, told me I was stupid, worthless, etc. That sucked, but when I went to live with my mother, who'd supposedly cleaned up her act, it got worse. Physical pain and terror are bad and everything, but my mom tried to unmake me. Her shit messed with my mind, almost drove me insane. By the time I moved out, I was planning to murder her and then myself, and that would not have been the first, even the second time someone tried to kill her ass. She would act like she was the only person who ever loved me. Not an unrealistic concept, considering how everybody else in her life treated me, then be needlessly cruel and nasty. She's a practicing anorexic. She would crash diet together. And she always told me I would be so pretty if I just lost a few more pounds. When I tried to get recovery from my own anorexia, she was actively negative. She complained about what I was doing to myself when I started to gain weight. Whenever I would try and stand up to her, she would cry and complain that I was taking advantage of her, being a terrible daughter, breaking her heart, etc. Instead of beating on me like my grandpa did, she would torture me. Literally. Shit that is against the Geneva Convention. She would keep me awake at night. She would tell me detailed plans for suicide. In the morning, she would wake me up by dragging me out of bed by my feet, screaming the whole time about something I couldn't have possibly done to her. She would alternate concern and violence or threats of violence completely at random. You never knew what she would act like, minute to minute. She's told me before that she treated me so horribly because of my bad karma. If I ever tried to point out how toxic this all was, she would tell me I brought it on myself by being negative. The thing that really makes her a sociopath is that is not insane behavior. This is just the shit she did to keep me distracted and confused so that she could get the $300 a month state aid for having me in the house. If I'd ever been aware enough to leave, that money would have gone with me, which it eventually did when I did leave. She does it to my grandma. She tells her one thing, then another, then confuses them with each other. Then my uncle thinks my grandma is getting dementia, and my mom totally agrees because she needs grandma's car, or she needs everybody to be too upset that grandma is confused to wonder why grandma is paying part of her rent. Her ex-boyfriend pays her car payment. For a while, she's bragged that he still thought they were together, joking that he's too old and ugly. I know she mocks him because he can't get it up. He can't get it up because he has fucking prostate cancer. He's a really nice man, and she will do anything to ensure that she's in his will and that she gets as much out of him as she can before he dies. To this day, she pretends she doesn't understand why she can't have my address. She actually asked me what she's done to me lately to deserve such horrible treatment. Lately. The only reason she hasn't hurt me lately is because she doesn't know where I am and only has the most basic details of my life. TL, doctor, I've had this shit beaten out of me and been treated worse than a dog, but that was nothing compared to my mom's insane mind games. I have an older sister who I believed would be considered a sociopath. She has torn apart my family, physically hurt us, stolen from us, lied to us, among other terrible things. My mother, the kindest woman in the world, has been completely physically and emotionally ravaged by my sister Brandy. Brandy was born eight years ahead of me in 1981. My mother was married to an abusive alcoholic at the time, Brandy's father Vic. He disappeared shortly after she was born and never heard from again. However, my mom says she sees a lot of Vic in my sister, that he had a very similar personality. When Brandy was five, my mom met my dad. She was extremely unhappy with the new addition to the family and would often have random fits of rage and throw things at my dad and become physically violent. My dad just thought she needed to adjust to having a male role model in her life and she would eventually settle down. That never happened. Shortly after Brandy's eighth birthday, I was born. This caused even more disruption. When I was around six months old, she began covering my mouth with her hands when I wasn't crying, when I was happy, because happy babies disgusted her. She also began stealing my toys, blankets, and binkies, throwing them in the trash. My parents started to grow really concerned and started sending her to counseling. They could not figure out why she acted like this, their kind, loving, caring parents doing their best. Around this time, they found out they are pregnant again with my little sister, who was born about a year and a half 
after I was. When my little sister turns one, Brandy throws her into a wall and breaks her arm. My parents are extremely scared, frustrated, and unprepared. They decide it might be best for her to live with my grandma two hours away. From 10 to 13, Brandy is molested by my step-grandpa until his death. We found out years later, and my mom has never forgiven herself. This is when her life really starts to spin out of control. She begins stealing, lying, cheating, and sleeping around, etc. She develops an alcohol and drug problem by age 15. She's expelled at age 16. At age 18, she throws my grandma to the ground and steals her car. She ends up with a man who is in his 40s. Chris becomes my brother-in-law. He is an alcoholic, a felon, has a gambling problem, a drug addict, a woman beater, thief, just an all-around bad person. But he is terrified of Brandy. He once told me she's an evil, an evil he never wants to experience again. He is currently in hiding with their son, who is also terrified of my sister. She ends up pregnant at 22. She doesn't care. She drinks, smokes, does drugs. My nephew is born blind and develops autism. She would contact us when she needed something, but we couldn't ever find her. She would find us, and it always ended up hurting. She runs away from everyone with her son and abandons him at age four in a crib in an apartment in Alaska. He is found three days later, extremely malnourished, laying in his own shit. It was horrible. She's 32 now. I have no idea where she is at the moment. My parents have a restraining order against her and moved. Here's a list of horrible things she has done to us. Stolen my vehicle and my mom's. Broke into my parents' home and smashed every single dish and pulled everything from the cabinets and pantry into a giant pile in the middle of the kitchen. Tried to stab my dad. Tried to stab me. Abandoned my little sister and I at a mall six hours from home when we were 11 and 12. Covered my little sister's mirror in her blood after she slit her wrists. Tried to steal my identity. Accused my brother-in-law of raping her. Tried to smother my grandmother in the hospital. She blames everything on her, etc., etc. She always leaves behind a horrible mess of destruction and pain in her wake. She cons people for fun. She uses women and men. I'm sure she's probably killed someone at some point in her life or will. She is pretty and extremely charming until she has a complete breakdown. I don't even know how to explain the feeling she gives me. It is on a level of creepy I have never experienced other than with her. Just her smile makes me want to vomit. My brother is schizophrenic, a drug abuser and an alcoholic. His schizophrenia was not diagnosed for a long time and as a result, he wasn't properly treated until very late in his life. Growing up with him was a nightmare. He would physically assault my sisters and I. He would steal money. He would take our bikes and wreck them. He would destroy things that he knew we liked. He would get raging drunk, stoned, etc. and launch into violent episodes every holiday. Hell, all the time. But the holidays really got him going. It once took six cops to wrestle him into submission to be hauled off to get medical slash mental treatment. The best parts of my childhood, pre-getting my license, were when his ass was in various mental institutions. It meant we finally had peace in the house. The list of hurts, assaults, thefts, attacking any friends we allowed over goes on and on and on. And it is very hard to fully articulate what it was like growing up with him. I could list dozens and dozens of hurts that evil sack of shit did to my sisters and I, and each would not do justice to describing the living hell it was to deal with him. I've read stories about people having abuse of parents, and it is the same sort of thing. My parents were divorced, and my mom did her best, but what can one do with that when you have to work all day, and all you want to do at the end of the day is crash? The only good part of it all was that he consumed all of my mother's energy, so I was completely unsupervised, and when I got my license, I got myself a car, and I was pretty much never home after. In the summer, I would split for weeks. As a 16-year-old, I drove to the outer banks of North Carolina and from Charlottesville, Virginia. It is about three to four hour drive with nowhere to stay and lived out of the car, crashing at friends' places, sleeping on porches of vacation homes for about a week. I did this with very little money and with no one knowing I had done it other than a few friends I hung around with. I actually had a ton of fun in high school 
and when I got to college, I loved life. Mental illness is a serious disability, and living with a disabled person is a fucking nightmare. My brother is in jail. He's adopted, which is only important because it means I can sleep at night knowing that I don't possess the potential that he has. He has ADHS, FAE, FAD, ODD, ODS, RAD, and is bipolar and very aggressive. He doesn't have a legal note that he's a sociopath since he was put in prison before he was 18, but if you look up the definition, it describes him perfectly. The first time I realized that gave me chills. I could go into detail about him, but the short of it is, I hate him. He's my brother, and regardless of how he joined the family, that is a fact. But after he molested children and tried to kill my father, I stopped talking to him. That was five or six years ago, I've lost count. That boy ruined my family and stole my childhood. Instead of happy memories, I have the memories of our town's cops ingrained in my head. Instead of enjoying childhood, I had to know about my mother trying to kill herself and having my father coming and crying to me while I was barely a teenager. The worst part of it all was watching my parents. For everything my brother did to me, he was just who he was, a manipulative sociopath. For my parents, he was their son and they were doing everything they could do for him. Even after he tried to kill my dad, my dad is still his biggest advocate and believes he can change. It is heartbreaking to see. I know my parents are split in emotions depending on the day. Some days they believe he's making progress and will see the light. Those are the hardest as I have to decide whether to remind them he's manipulating them to get what he wants or if I should let them have false hope. Some days they feel that way I do that he has driven them to bankruptcy, ruined their futures, and made them miss their back burner daughter's year old life. This will probably get buried, but I'm happy to talk more about it if there's any interest. I get a lot of flack whenever I try to talk about this. I'm using a throwaway for obvious reasons. I was what you'd call a troubled teen. Unlike Adam Lanza, I wasn't suffering from any form of autism. I came from an abusive, fractured home. Children are cruel and my childhood was rough. I won't go into details, but let's just say I had no solace whatsoever. Home was hell. School was hell. There was no one I could turn to, no outlet for my pain. I was a mostly normal kid, though lonely and very, very anxious. By the time I was a teenager in high school, though, I went from being lonely to being isolated. I stopped speaking almost entirely. I didn't make eye contact with anyone. I walked funny. I couldn't focus my mind anymore. By this point, my parents had split up and my mom was actively trying to get me help. Like Adam, I wouldn't have any of it. I refused to speak to therapists. I stopped giving a damn about adults and no longer respected their authority. My grades plummeted. You could drag me to school, but like a stubborn horse and its water, you couldn't make me study or do homework. These were dark days and I have had a hard time remembering them or what exactly was going through my mind. I constantly flirted with suicide. I held loaded guns to my head. I stood ledges and pondered jumping. Sometimes while driving, I'd be tempted to veer into oncoming 18-wheelers. I was brimming with hurt. I saw no escape. I couldn't remember feeling anything but the never-ending pain. When I did try to talk to people about it, they told me I was selfish. They told me how people in Africa had it so much worse and I should be ashamed of myself or how things would get better. These people couldn't even begin to comprehend my pain. Make no doubt about it, it was real and I was in no way exaggerating. My hurt became rage and hate. I wanted to show people that it is possible to live in a first world country and suffer horrifically. James Knoll, a forensic psychiatrist at SUNY, has written that Adam's act conveyed a message. I carry profound hurt. I'll go ballistic and transfer it onto you. The above quote really struck a chord with me. That is exactly what I was experiencing. I wanted to hurt people in the worst way possible. In a murder, who really suffers the most? The person who dies or the people who have to live the rest of their lives with that loss? Ask any parent and I think most will say they will gladly die for their child. I never harmed anyone, thankfully, and today I'm in therapy. I'm doing very well in life and I moved on from those darker days. Drawing from my own disturbed thinking, I can only speculate 
that people like Adam Lanza don't view the people they kill as the actual victims. The real victims are the families who are left behind. The families who've had something irreplaceable torn from them. Those are the real targets. It's not about shooting up the school. It's about inflicting pain and loss on as many people as possible and knowing that they are going to live the rest of their lives with that pain. It's taking my hurt and spreading it. It's showing people that you can have a home, a bed, and food, but still suffer. It's showing people that sometimes the pain is so bad, suicide is justified.